Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Khan. This edition stops stories. The multi-sectoral body constituted to help steer the growth of St. Lucia's tourism product delves into its priority areas. The legacy of St. Lucian academic Dr. Patricia Isman is remembered. 40 young persons will gain valuable IT skills under a scholarship initiative by the NSDC. All that was the latest in youth development, born and the NTN Nouvelle Aquaire. The multi-sectoral body constituted to help steer the growth of St. Lucia's tourism product held its second session on Thursday, 14th March. The Tourism Advisory Council delved into priority areas for the year, including revenue. The Ministry of Tourism, Information, Broadcasting, Creative Industries and Culture has declared 2019 the year of revenue generation. The aim is to position all stakeholders in tourism to accrue financial benefit. Janelle Norville attended the session and filed this report. The Tourism Advisory Committee on Thursday held its second official session. The committee is a multi-stakeholder advisory grouping comprising both public and private representatives with an interest in bolstering tourism development and management. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Dominic Fede, indicates that this year's focus will be on the generation of revenue from the tourism sector. The minister also highlights the mandate of the recently established revenue subcommittee. It's, it's simply to improve the economic penetration, to make sure as a country and a people that we make more money from tourism. You would have seen me uh, flouting the arrival numbers, but I think that too, for too long we have measured the industry on the arrival numbers only. We have to have a greater focus on the economic penetration and the economic benefits on the per guest spend of the destination. So uh, what the Revenue Committee is taking an island-wide look at the industry to see how we can improve um, the per guest spend, especially in uh, communities. And so uh, we're looking at our ven vendors as a first uh, point of um, training and um, improvement and uh, turning them into good business people. Product development is critical and essential to this as well. Uh, it's research driven. Uh, we want to ensure that we're, we're selling the right products that the cruise industry would like to buy. The council, according to Minister Fede, facilitates partnerships among the public and private sectors and seeks to resolve long-standing bottlenecks which impede product development and enhancement while generating consensus on the way forward for the development and management of the tourism sector in St. Lucia. The tourism minister notes priority areas for the committee. The vision that we have for the next uh, three years or so is to make the industry competitive. So competitiveness is one. Uh, but secondly, as well, sustainability and also resilience are two of the other areas. So on the one hand, while we focus on the economics and the commercialization of the sector, we also have to make sure that it is sustainable, it is resilient, especially in light of the um, very active um, extreme weather conditions that we have seen in recent times. So we are ensuring that uh, we uh, institute best practices for uh, tourism government and, and development. The Tourism Advisory Committee was launched on the 25th of May 2018. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The water and sewage company Wasco has cemented an opportunity for further collaboration in the development of the water sector. Amanda Flay Clark reports. A ceremony to mark the start of a new collaboration between the water and sewage company Wasco and the main water company in Cuba, Cuba Hydraulica, culminated with the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the two firms. Director of Wasco's board of directors, Francis Dembo, says the main objective is to cooperate in different aspects of the management of drinking water and wastewater services and to improve the performance of these services around the island. The areas of cooperation will include, but not limited to, one, the provision of technical assistance to WASCO, training and capacity building, and exchange of knowledge and information between the parties. It will also address a reduction of non-revenue water with a focus on water supply systems in the northern part of St. Lucia. Leak detection and water line repairs are also included in that memorandum of understanding. 
maintenance and repair of equipment used in water and wastewater services systems. The Memorandum of Understanding also include laboratory services for water supply and wastewater management systems and critically, exploration, extraction and treatment of water from sources other than surface water systems. Director of Cuba Hydraulica Manuel Font says a number of areas for cooperation were identified during the Agriculture Minister's visit to Cuba last year, in which the two companies, Wasco and Cuba Hydraulica, expect that their collaboration will be mutually beneficial. We also want to emphasize that we need to work also in agriculture because uh, it, it, the, those are areas important for the development and they are all related to the use of water. It is expected that this new memorandum of understanding will pave the way for improved water quality and agriculture production around the island. From the Information Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, I'm Amanda Ficklock reporting. Students of Literature from the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College and the view for comprehensive Campus B gathered at the UB Open Campus to participate in the third annual Patricia Ismond Literary Workshop. The workshop brings to a close the series of events held for the 2019 Nobel Laureate Festival. The event honors the memory of the late Dr. Ismond for her sterling academic contributions to the region, the UB Open Campus, and St. Lucia. Anissa Antoine has the details. The UV Open Campus St. Lucia hosted its third annual workshop in honor of Dr. Patricia Esmond, a St. Lucia literary icon and long-serving UV professor of literature. The workshop was facilitated by Dr. Antonia MacDonald, Professor of English Literature and Associate Dean in the School of Arts and Sciences, St. George's University, who gave examination tips to students who are currently preparing for Cape Literatures in English exams. Sister of the late Dr. Patricia Ismond, Hester Ismond, expressed her gratitude to UWE Open Campus St. Lucia for commemorating her sister's legacy over the years. She went to um, the University of Kent in England where she did her doctorate on uh, Derek Walcott in the 70s. So she was way ahead of her time in doing his work. She was bold enough to attempt to do his work. It was on drama and poetry. And uh, while she was doing this, my mother got sick, so she left and came down and took care of my mother for, for a while and went back and completed her, her doctorate in PhD. When she returned to the Caribbean, she taught at the University of the West Indies and in Trinidad, and she taught literature and uh, was instrumental in uh, setting up a workshop theatre workshop in developing that. Chairperson of the Nobel Laureate Committee, Her Excellency Dame Perlet Louisi, encouraged the students to be receptive in all aspects of their lives. For those of you doing literature, um, this is where your, your strength you know, lies and this is what I would like to hope that you are bringing into um, this new um, digital digital age. Uh, everything doesn't have to be so utilitarian that you know you're doing that because this, there is space for, for, for the cultural in the, in the general sense. The workshop took place on Thursday, March 14th at the UWE Open Campus St. Lucia site on Mourn Fortune. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. 40 young persons will now have the opportunity to gain basic skills in information technology. The National Skills Development Center is offering 40 scholarships to those wishing to be introduced to the subject. Public Relations Officer Mustafa Felicien says in today's world, IT skills are of utmost importance. It is not a plus or anything um, specific, but the general consensus um, for someone to have IT uh, as part of their um, CV is, is definitely essential. And so we'd like to award uh, 40 St. Lucians an opportunity to get to know NSDC to get the IT skills they need to progress. IT is, uh, I think, is a foundation tool that you need to have now in 2019. Everything, services are, are more accessible to you now. Information is, is easier shared now with uh, computers and so just being able to access that increases your opportunity to get employment. The course will run for two weeks beginning Monday March 18 and cover the fundamentals of information technology. The course will also include soft skills. 
Soft Skills looks at the intangible um, products that help someone really sustain a job. It's one thing to, to use your qualifications to get a job, but then to actually have the know-how to keep. Things like communication skills, uh, conflict resolution skills, team management, team building, self-management, and a host of other um, skills to really maintain. The National Skills Development Center offers technical vocational training courses, including auto mechanics, culinary art, construction, and massage therapy. And this is the NTN Nightly. Coming up, the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. Climat la terre a changé. Exact a affecté nous toutes. Cyclone qui a venu plus mauvais. Gros de l'eau et de la pente de l'eau qui a détruit les animaux et plein. Quand la mer a venu plus chaud, il a tué place qui se présente dans la gravité. La mer chaude qui a aussi changé de manière se présente qui a quitté de l'autre côté et qui a allé à l'autre côté. Cette liste a contribué à un petit zingas en l'espace. Quand un petit pays nous a essayé de faire tout ça nous a fait pour assurer qu'il nous baissait à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi pour empêcher la terre. Et faut pour baisser à ce quantité de gaz nous avons servi, c'est mitigation. Le climat a changé. Il a changé depuis que nous avons tout le monde dans la terre, Kaboulé, gaz, l'huile et le chèbon. Et ça, quand on est causé la terre, on a changé plus chaud. Ça, nous ne pouvons faire tout le monde, c'est pour adapter. Faites tout ça, nous avons fait pour préparer et répondre pour ces conséquences négatives à la cause du changement climat. Nous tous, ça fait quelque chose. Par exemple, nous n'y pouvons assurer qui nous protéger tout ça nous a planté. C'est vie fumier qui est naturel. Pratique quand nous pouvons abattre des manches en temps cyclone et godlo. Construit canal pour de l'eau couille bien quand il faut. Et assurer qui canal là par les ordi. Fait tout ça qui est possible pour vivre en temps changement climat ça. Trouvez plus d'informations à ce plan d'adaptation national gouvernement et des marches ou même ça prend pour protéger corps et tout notre cette lycée. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sport. Hello once again. I'm Ryan O'Brien from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports with your update on the NTN Nightly News. What a final match is scheduled for Friday, March 15th in the Mass United Schools Cricket Competition. Joe Sufre Comprehensive will be facing Miku Secondary at the Philip Mars Le Grand. Archipo Secondary. We'll tackle Corin Secondary at Balata. The Arthur Lewis Community College takes on Beanfield at the Mindoufile Park. And St. Mary's College plays Leon Hess Comprehensive at Grosile. As the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports gets ready to launch its youth mentorship program Friday, March 15, it will be worthy to know the rationale for a youth mentoring program. Youth's problematic behaviors are often linked to poor relationships with adults in their lives. One possible contributing factor is the reality of having parents in low-income jobs. Children and youth with parents in low income often experience maternal scarcity and family disruptive work hours. Other problems include barren children who are left with other siblings or other family members to supervise while parents work overseas. Fatherless and lack of emotional connection with fathers in homes is also a factor for consideration. With such gaps in parenting, children and youth are in need of critical inputs in their lives to rescue them from the dysfunctionalities of their era. Training continues for St. Lucia's national under-16 netball team that will be participating in the upcoming Jean Pierre netball tournament in Antigua, March 28 to April 5. The St. Lucia team has come out of secondary schools netball tournaments organized by the Ministry of Youth Development and Sport. Netball coaches within the ministry, Chair Maxwell and Vern Alexander, have been working with the team. Maxwell with players in Castries and Miku, and Alexander with players from Soufre and Canaries. Sessions are conducted two days in a week in each area, and the players come together at the Viji Malipopa Sports Complex on Saturdays. St. Lucia plays second in a tournament held in St. Lucia last year. That's your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sport today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Energy is alerting the motoring and pedestrian public of the commencement of its road markings program from Groselay to Cash Trees. The aim is to improve road safety. The road markings program commenced on Sunday, March 10th, and is scheduled to be rolled out along the John Compton Highway from Cash Trees to Groselay, the western section of Jeremy Street, Pena to Bridge Street, Manuel Street, 
in a relief road and ending at the Manans roundabout. The initiative will enhance all edge and center lines, all lane and directional arrows, all hatch lines and pedestrian crossings. Civil engineer in the Department of Infrastructure Mr. Sherman Sylvester says the aim is to improve road safety for all commuters. Cognizant that road markings give important information and instructions to the motorists and drivers about vehicle positioning, road alignment and other vital road information. The markings of the road will be directing motorists and pedestrians on how to use the roads adequately and safely. If everyone follows the markings that are on the road, then everyone will be able to get to the destination safely. Enhancing road safety remains a top priority for the Department of Infrastructure. One initiative at a time, the aim is to ensure the daily commute is a lot safer for motorists and pedestrians alike. The objective is to help improve road safety, that is by um, signage and by road markings. We've already um, done signage along the Castries Grizzly Highway West Coast and East Coast Road, Millennium Highway also. We're hoping to continue with the road safety um, project we have ongoing, that is encompassing West Coast Road and the Millennium Highway and continue along also onto the East Coast Road. During the execution of the project, traffic will be reduced to one lane to allow for the markings of the edge and center lines. Motorists are encouraged to monitor and follow the various traffic signs that will be posted and abide by the instructions given by flaggers who will be on location and extend full cooperation. Yes, we are hoping to, well, weather permitting, to continue marking during the week and on the weekends, that is from Castries to Grosily. We will be informing the public on a weekly basis via press release as to our exact locations. We will also have the directional signs, the caution signs and the cones on the road to direct and direct persons accordingly, that is motorists and pedestrians, whilst the works are going on to ensure that they are safe during the execution of the works. The Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Energy wishes to apologize for any inconvenience which may be caused as a result of the road works but assures the public that these interventions are important as we continue implementing projects aimed at improving road safety. From the communications unit, this is Shannon Lamon. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Armas Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. With just one click, the internet connects people, businesses and nations. Being connected can open a world of information and opportunities. You can get services and products of your choice much faster. From electronic financial transactions to connecting with family and friends. From being up to date with the latest news and information to learning new skills and acquiring academic qualifications. All from the convenience of your home or wherever you roam. Get connected today. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Ectel, the NTRC, and this station. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. Monsieur Tarnisha, Monsieur Madame, the Department of Marketing and Responsibility for Information, Gouvernement Setlisi, that's the GIS, that's the Television National PR NTN. Was it our novel? We all was it our prime set system? So, TP, yeah, exactly. C'est généralement à essayer ménager nos conditions maladie qui vraiment dangereux. Ça c'est menace ou ressource ça comme menace ou ressource nous sérieusement. Ça c'est maladie en noir monde. Majorité monde qui est malade, ça là pas qu'à santé malade en commencement et bien premier stage maladie et sans examination médicale réglement. Il n'est pas possible de découvrir qu'on est assez. Si on veut qu'on souffre et puis maladie noire. Maladie noire a augmenté en pays cette ci rapidement. Et en l'année 2015, la tenu 95 personnes qui ont trouvé traitement par dialysis à l'hôpital St. Jude et Victoria. Mais l'année 85 personnes qui l'ont toujours aspé pour recevoir traitement. Tout le monde ça là. Pourquoi recevoir traitement? Parce que de l'hôpital là, on y ces ressources là pour tuer traitement ça là. À partir de ça, la tenue, il y a 150 personnes qui ont une maladie noire en degré 4 et qui ont 172 en degré 3. Je dis, monsieur, mais ici, cette ci et puis la vie de la terre, tu es venu ensemble pour faire le peuple plus sensible pour la maladie de la À bas terme, la santé maladie noire, c'est pour tout le monde. J'ai estimé que plus de 850 millions de dollars, millions de personnes, excusez-moi, au lieu de la terre, a souffert et puis maladie noire. Maladie noire, ça a occasionné la mort par moins de 
2.4 million moun par l'année. Et aussi, c'est la sixième plus mauvaise maladie qui a été causée la mort. Et pour l'année, ça là, c'est pour, c'est pour nous venir plus au courant des maladies noires et c'est façon pour empêcher et ménager. Les officiers de santé ont plaidé et puis le public là, pourquoi l'importance de la maladie ça là, plus sérieux, parce que il est très cher pour trouver le traitement et la majorité des gens qui ont une maladie, pourquoi ça trouve le traitement et qu'on n'est pas capable de payer pour le traitement. Il y en a ces gens qui ont découvert 10 ans qui ont été affectés et puis la maladie noire, c'est la douane civile. Mais il y a aussi le traitement présentement. Il y a des qui sont appréciable pour trouver l'occasion pour recevoir le traitement. La Jani a un appel pour tout le pays à adopter une bonne attitude de santé pour une examination pour le noyau. La Jani a un appel aussi pour le gouvernement établir un travail qui est égal à tout le monde service de santé. Il y a un programme pour marcher chemin le pays a commencé le 10 mars et qui a adressé le grand chemin John Compton, sorti de Caspi, pour concilier. Aussi la rue Jérémy, Penier, pour la rue Pont, pour la rue Manuel et pour trouver un banane. Initiative Sala, qui a adressé toutes ces signes qui associent chez Mme Sala, ingénieur en département de Chaman Sylvester, qui a déclaré que le programme Sala, c'est pour aider, aider, aider tout le monde qui a associé chez Mme Sala aussi. Il a éduqué à ce qui est la position pour produire chez Mme Sala, c'est tout le monde qui a produit chez Mme Sala, c'est tout le monde qui a associé chez Mme Sala, c'est tout le monde qui a associé chez Mme Sala. Ça a été plus facile pour tout chauffeur auto conduit sans décembre à ce chemin PIA. Et tout le monde qui est arrivé à destination, ça a été un peu Protection à ce chemin, c'est le département de transportation toujours concerné. Attention, selon Sylvester, c'est pour assurer que tout le chemin n'est pas pour aider les chauffeurs auto et le monde aussi. Pour ça, ça a été établi un chemin qui a été ouvert fort pour le bon chemin. Bananes pour col de sac, c'est chez mes millionnaires, et tu mets col de sac pour souffrir. Génie a annoncé aussi qu'il y a continuer pour établir une à sous le restant, c'est chez mes salas, et qu'il y a passé diverses signes, il y a chauffeur l'autodirection, il y a un qui a continué, particulièrement à ce grand chez mes castes, pour gosiller. Le département des transportations a fait une apologie, et puis le public là, et chauffeur l'auto, mais qui a assuré que l'initiative salaire, c'est important pour établir mes opérations et protection à ce chemin. Si. Compagnie de l'eau en cette ci et plus gros compagnie de l'eau en Cuba, si il y a un argument de coopération entre des compagnies de l'eau. Directeur Wasco Francis Dengo, remarque que l'initiative de l'eau, c'est pour aider et improuver à son ménagement et opération de l'eau, mon cas, et de l'eau lavandé. Et aussi pour improuver à son système de l'eau au Liban PIA. Parmi ces assistances-là, c'est, ça c'est selon M. Dengo, c'est étonnement et pour bâtir la capacité de travailler, ou ASCO, pour aussi bâtir la capacité technique et pour l'année, échange des informations à des agences. Agrément, ça là, ça a adressé aussi qui y a qui a coulé et pour ranger l'équipement qui a servi pour traiter de l'eau. Mais encore plus critique, c'est pour côté pour trouver sous de l'eau et pour propager ce de l'eau, ça là. Ménagement de l'eau, c'est yon, yon a parmi plusieurs autres sujets à bas à gomme à Directeur pour la compagnie de l'eau Cuba, Manuel Font, t'a quoi qui, présentation au ministre de l'Agriculture pour Cuba, et visitation des officiers Cuba à cette ici, qui ont renforcé la collaboration des compagnies de l'eau sala. Madame Font, t'a quoi aussi, qui est nécessaire pour adresser de l'eau en agriculture, aussi parce que c'est très important au développement. C'est ce quoi, c'est grec là, qui a gomme à sala qui a éprouvé les grandes qualités de l'eau et la production des affaires agricoles au Liban. Branche Université UWI, à cette ci a présenté le troisième atelier des affaires les écrivains à l'honneur Dr. Patricia Ismond, qui est professeur des affaires écrivains, qui aussi travaille et puis l'Université Salah pour un pilote. C'est Dr. Antonio McDonald qui facilite l'atelier Salah. Dr. McDonald, c'est un instituté et professeur des affaires écrivains avec les, les, les trois types. Il est aussi un grand grec à département science à l'Université de St. George's à la Grenade. Il présente des conseils en affaires d'examination pour les étudiants qui ont préparé pour l'examination KIP à l'étroitie des Anglais. C'est ce que Dr. Patricia Esmond. Esmond, oui, merci, l'Université UWI, 
pour qu'on tienne la mémoire de ces vivants. Il déclare que l'initiative est l'occasion pour établir l'étroitie en affaires culturelles. Si je veux que ça ait une cause pour nous voir et comprendre les opinions des autres, et de manière à l'autre monde qui est au nous, ça a Il dit que ça a aidé pour prendre une décision et prendre une position sur l'autre sujet. C'est comme ça que nous entendons la nouvelle aujourd'hui. Mais c'est vrai que nous avons mis au temps pour garder, nous avons une invitation. Pour que je ne puisse pas encore nous avoir une nouvelle aujourd'hui. Après ça, nous avons vu pour Michel. Merci on Pale Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Skies are fair to partly cloudy with a few showers as the Atlantic high pressure system is expected to be the dominant feature over the Eastern Caribbean region. The islands therefore will experience moderate easterly winds and mostly fair weather apart from a few brief showers. The tide for Castries Harbor was low at 4:18 p.m. and will be high again at 11:28 p.m. Tides for VFOR Bay was low at 5.45 p.m. and will be high again at 12.35 p.m. The seas slide to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 6.11 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.